Hello everyone, this is James, your Investing Kaki. In this video, we're going to talk about Genting Singapore yet again. I know I've covered this stock a few months back, but there are some big news that may change the overall perception of the stock itself. On top of that, I've come up with a new stock analysis template where I will cover the company profile, headlines, bull and bear case, and my take on the stock itself. So if you like this format, do give me a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm knows that as well. Without further ado, let's dive into the stock analysis. So first of all, let's talk about what Genting Singapore is. All right, a quick background. Genting Singapore owns this one big asset called RWS, Resorts World Sentosa. And it comprises of various attractions in itself, such as the Sea Aquarium, Adventure Cove, Universal Studios, hotels, and last but not least, the very important casino. And you won't believe it on how scary or far-reaching the Chinese government is. So with this big headline over here, you can see how the China itself, the government, is restricting on what their citizens can do overseas as well. Not just their own companies or their own industries inside China, but their citizens outside of China. Okay? So in this case, right, they are asking them to stay away from gambling in Southeast Asia specifically. In addition, it's important to note that for Chinese citizens, Macau is the only part of China where gambling is legal. So if the Chinese citizens, if they travel overseas to other countries, be it like South Korea or Malaysia, it's all illegal. The other thing is that Chinese Foreign Minister spokesman Lin Jian, right, has a very clear stance on their country positioning on cross-border gambling. And he said that Chinese capital cannot be invested in overseas casinos and that overseas casinos should not invite Chinese citizens to gamble in their premises. So this is very clear from directly from the source of the Chinese government. On top of that, I've uh, grabbed a screenshot from this reporting platform right so if any chinese citizen okay is found engaging in overseas gambling any of them can be reported by someone close to them so if you think about it this is a very scary thing imagine going it uh, going to the other country to gamble as a group and maybe your friend just want to backstab you all right and he can just provide some clues about you and then you will be given rewards while you will be penalized. This is a very scary thought. And uh, I think this will deter a lot of people right, from even trying to gamble overseas. But that being said, right, um, let's look at the bull case of Genting Singapore first. Okay, so first of all, if you look at their full year FY 2023 results, okay, they have a fantastic uh, year itself. Revenue jump 40% and the net profit attributable to ordinary shareholders jump 80%. Okay, from 340 million to 611 million. I suspect a lot of this uh, comes from the uh, opening up of China itself. So a lot of their mainland tourists come to Singapore and come to RWS specifically to you know to spend their money to enjoy the freedom that they have gotten so far after two years, three years of being locked down. Okay, and the other thing is that uh, for Genting Singapore, they have a pristine balance sheet. Okay, their financial position is very strong. They have zero debt at all, no borrowings. All right, and they have 3.6 billion in cash and equivalents. So if you think about it, and on top of that, right, they are churning out free cash flow every year. So all this money can be reinvested to build RWS 2.0, okay, which I will cover it in the next slide. So for the dividends itself, okay, you can see that uh, there's a significant dip during 2021 and 2022. That's just simply because of the COVID pandemic. But other than that, you can see from 2015 to 2020 before the pandemic, the dividends, uh, the yield has actually been increasing. And so far, now that the, you know, the dividends amount 
has stabilized at around four cents. They are giving out a four percent dividend yield, which I think is pretty decent. And talking about the RWS 2.0 master plan, I've covered this in my previous videos, uh, but this is something that investors should or can look forward to, which is the, you know, all the new attractions like Nintendo World, Minion Land, the waterfront complex where they have 700 hotel rooms, okay, which are very nice, facing the sea view and all that, which I suspect will cause a bomb and is targeted at the high rollers. That means all those high net worth individuals. From the price to book kind of a valuation point, right? it is uh, the cheapest as compared to Las Vegas Sands, Galaxy Entertainment, Win Resorts, which is loss making or there's a negative book value. 1.3 times price to book, which is the lowest among all their peers. Let's move on to the bear case where we talk about okay, this recent article is even more updated than the CNA one where they interview an industry consultant asking whether it's illegal for them to gamble overseas and how that might affect regional casinos. This particular industry consultant says that while you know, maybe it will not play a very big part uh, in the long term wise, short term wise, a lot of these punters who get commissions for referring Chinese nationals to come and gamble in Singapore may stay low for at least the near term. So this will impact uh, the casinos in Asia directly very quickly. And on top of that, because Chinese nationals play a very large, uh, contribute to a very large proportion of their gaming revenue. So in the long term, the impact is still relatively unknown, but there will be some impact because there are some people who may still, you know, choose not to gamble here and choose to gamble in Macau itself, where it's legal, right, for them. So there's no another risk involved. On top of that, right, let's look at Genting Singapore, their revenue breakdown itself. For gaming revenue, Genting Singapore has a 1.6 billion okay, from their gaming division, while non-gaming contribute to 770 million. So you can see here that the gaming revenue is more than double that of the non-gaming revenue. Hence, any impact, okay, for, um, you know, tourists coming to gamble in Genting Singapore itself will hit their bottom line directly, very hard. And if we were to look at DBS analyst report, it is also showing that Genting Singapore EBITDA margins are dropping, okay, on a year to year basis as well as a quarter to quarter basis. So they, their EBITDA margin was 46.6% last year for their fourth quarter, and last quarter was 50.1%, but they dropped to 35% in the recent quarter due to the bad debt losses of $92 million. The bad thing is that if a lot of these Chinese nationals, they go back, they don't pay their debt, they choose not to come back again, you know, there will be a chance uh, that Genting Singapore will have more bad debt going forward. Okay, so what is my take on all this? Okay, so I, overall itself, okay, I think that Genting Singapore is still a cash cow because we only have two integrated resorts in Singapore. One is Marina Bay Sands, the other one is Genting Singapore. So it's like a dual poly, right? Um, uh, they are churning out uh, free cash flow with such a strong balance sheet. So there's no um, concern or, or anything for Genting Singapore. However, their dividends may be impacted because of the bad debts incurred. Okay, when they extend the credit to all these Chinese VIP customers. And on top of that, they have this huge 6.8 billion capex they want to inject into the RWS 2.0 master plan. So right now, if you can recall, they only have around 3.6 or 3.8 billion in cash. So they still have to cough out 3 billion in cash over a period of maybe five years to pay for this master plan, for this upgrading, okay? So either they have to borrow 
okay, or they have to churn out enough free cash flow to pay for this capex. So, which I think it may be restrictive for the dividends. Uh. That means they may choose to just pay four cents dividends for the next four or five years, or they may choose to even reduce so that they have more cash on hand. The third point that I want to uh, highlight, right, is that going forward, I am not convinced of the performance, right, of the financials of Genting Singapore because of the ongoing geopolitical and macroeconomic reasons. One thing is the Chinese, um, the law, right, whereby uh, they just uh, stop people com from coming to uh, our Singapore casino. And then the other thing is that there may be a heightened increase uh, risk of recession going forward, especially when you look at there are so many layoffs going on and that may have an impact on Genting Singapore because they are targeting the, you know, the middle class to uh, rich people, rich individuals. They are just betting on the, you know, the rebound in China tourism again. So you are expecting more China tourists to come out and all that. I think there's a better alternative, which is uh, Hong Kong listed Galaxy Entertainment. In the past few years, they have changed their offering. So last time they used to target just the VIP customers, like what Genting Singapore is doing now. Now they are focusing on the mass market and it is actually the top pick in the Macau gaming sector for JP Morgan. This is because of their VIP segment that has been showing signs of recovery. And this is actually surprising to the analysts over there because uh, they all thought that the VIP segment would be quite depressed, but actually it's not. That means China people are going over to Macau as well. So this can be a better alternative for Genting Singapore itself. Then I also want to hear from you. If you like this kind of stock analysis template where I cover the bull and bear case, do help me to comment good down below, right? As well as also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss another update. Next up, don't forget to check out my other popular video on the three local banks in Singapore over here. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and ciao.